Hello everyone, welcome back. This ninth module we are going to discuss meta model based reliability analysis and the first topic we are going to discuss today is least square approximation because we are going to use this technique for reliability analysis. So, the first question that comes in our mind why do we need meta models? To answer that question let us first consider the example that we have solved many times. Now, in this example we have a cantilever beam which is experiencing a point load at the free end and we design this beam against the support moment and we know the limit state function which is x1 times x2 minus x3 times L where L is the length of the cantilever beam. Now, we define the limit state function first that is gx equal to 0 and the moment we define that that means all the random variables are defined in terms of their PDF. From that we can estimate mean and standard deviation. So, the moment we have these two uh, parameters estimated then we can convert x into z space where z is the standard normal space. So, the moment we have gx is converted to gz then we can differentiate the function with respect to z in the standard normal space. And in that space we find out the optimal distance from the origin which is z star and the expression of z star also we have derived and solved many problems. Now, the reliability index beta it has this expression and in this expression we need to evaluate this g star first because that is the gradient evaluated at this z star. So, it automatically demands that this limit state function must be at least once differentiable because that is how we evaluate this gradient and then we use that information to find out the optimal distance in the standard normal space. So, the first order reliability method requires gradient. The moment we go for second order reliability method, this limit state function must be twice differentiable and that is how it uh, goes on. So, the main point we should keep in mind that in these gradient based reliability analysis, we must know the limit state function in closed form. As you can see in this case, gx is equal to x1 times x2 minus x3 times L. So, these type of limit state we call it explicitly defined limit state where we know the exact relation between x1, x2, x3 and then uh, how they form the limit state. And that is the reason we can differentiate this function with respect to the random variables x1, x2, x3. And that is how this uh, uh, first order or second order reliability method uh, is uh, developed and they can be used in this problem to solve the reliability index beta. But in reality that is not the case always. So, if we consider say for example, a finite element model as you can see, this is a model of a building. and uh, what we have in this case is the mass and stiffness matrix for the time being if we consider the static analysis only. So, we have the stiffness matrix for this complete structure. And then if we are worried of the stress at a particular location, then we define the limit state function like this where we have this sigma allowable at a particular location minus sigma that is stress at a particular point which is a function of say Young's modulus, cross sectional area, moment of inertia and maybe many other conditions. For example, boundary condition also affects the stress distribution. So, all this uh, matters when we solve this finite element model. Now, from this analysis we get this sigma which is uh, the applied stress at a particular location. Say for example, we consider this junction and what is the stress developed at this point is what is reflected here in this expression. Now, if you look at this limit state, we do not know explicitly how this stress at this particular location is defined in terms of say Young's modulus, cross sectional area, moment of inertia and there may be many other random variables involved in this analysis. This type of problem where we do not know the limit state in explicit form, we call it a implicitly defined limit state in terms of the random variable. Now, in this case, we cannot find out the gradient as we can in the other case, for example, this cantilever beam. Now, for this type of problem, we actually have solved 
this problem using a frame structure where we model the structure in ANSYS and in that uh, case we solve this problem where numerically we differentiated the limit state function. However, numerical differentiation has its own issues because of sensitivity and other uh, issues. So, we cannot always uh, adapt this numerical differentiation for complex structures where this limit state function may be very sensitive to the constituent random variables. Now, in these type of problem, we cannot use gradient based reliability analysis. Now, for that what we do? We try to develop a replica of this limit state where that function we can explicitly define in terms of the random variables. That function which replaces this original limit state is called the response surface or meta model and that is the reason uh, if we carry out reliability analysis on that function which replicates this original limit state is the meta model based reliability analysis. So, this alternate approach we will develop in this uh, module and we will see how it can be uh, used for finding out the reliability index and probability of failure. So, for that let us first discuss least square curve fitting. So, why we need least square curve fitting? Uh, because there is an another alternative we have already uh, solved that uh, that is simulation based reliability analysis. Now, simulation based reliability analysis can be easily adopted for implicit or explicit performance function. But remember that uh, for very low failure probability we need large number of samples in the simulation based reliability analysis. We have already derived this expression and also uh, went through this, uh, uh, this curve when we uh, studied Monte Carlo simulation. Now, for a complex finite element model, the moment we adopt Monte Carlo simulation, we need a very high computational cost. For every run we carry out, we need to solve the finite element model and after that only we get the response and sometimes if we, for example, need to evaluate stress. So, even for static analysis, we first get displacement and from that displacement we need to evaluate stress. So, it is time consuming and in many cases the simulation based reliability it faces problem even for um, implicitly defined limit state and that is the reason uh, we try to develop this uh, meta model based reliability analysis. So, um, it is a mathematical model we will see uh, we will fit an equation which will represent a surface and that we uh, fit for uh, an experimental data. So, we uh, carry out some experiment from that we have some observations that we plot and then we fit an expression maybe a straight line or maybe a uh, nonlinear function as we progress in this course we will see that. Now, in this systematic procedure we fit this unique curve through the data points. Now, the question is uh, what type of uh, performance function or an equation that we fit for this uh, data points that we will see as we progress. Now, once we have this model ready, that means we have the original function say gx that is now replaced with a new function say rx and the way we constitute this model where uh, this rx is a function of all the random variables, then we can use this meta model and instead of working on the gx, we can use this meta model for our reliability analysis. Now, because of this reason, its digital implementation is uh, very straightforward and efficient and that is the reason it is very popular for uh, reliability analysis, particularly for structures where uh, finite element analysis needs to be done and we have a very complex model in that case we can easily adapt. Now, let us first go through the uh, procedure and what we mean by this development of meta model and then we will see how we can extend that for reliability analysis. Just imagine if we have our data set 
in this case we have a, a two dimensional data set so we have x and y so for every x so x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable so for every x we have an observed y which are marked by this green dots now just by looking at the green dots we can expect a straight line may fit of course um, it will not touch every green dots because uh, they are not exactly over a straight line but more or less we can assume that a straight line will pass through all these points as you can see the blue line in this case so for that we have a function f which is a function of all xi so uh, it's a function of this uh, independent variable x so as we change x we can find out what is the f of x and that's how we plot this function shown by blue line now at every point this original green dot is having a coordinate say xi and yi and the difference between the blue line and this green dot is the error at that particular point so now if we have a data set xi and yi for uh, i ranging from 1 to say m then uh, we can fit a curve y equal to fx so what is the error in this case error ei is nothing but original observation yi that is represented by this green dot minus the value of uh, y that we get from the function we propose in this case it is f of x so we evaluate this function at xi point so the difference between these two as it is marked on this uh, schematic diagram so this is the error then uh, we square this error and then sum it up the reason why we uh, first uh, square it the reason is you can see the absolute error can be either positive or negative so if we add them up they may cancel each other and that's the reason we first square it up before we sum them up now obviously the total error is the summation over all i e i square obviously this sum of the square of errors we have to minimize if we fit a model so we have a model in this case say fx equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus up to an x to the power n now for the time being uh, we are going to fit a straight line that means our expression will be a0 plus a1x we don't have all other higher order terms so the moment we have that we can write down the expression of uh, sum of the square of the errors so we have fx equal to a0 plus a1x which is the equation of a straight line and then uh, if we expand this ei we get the expression yi minus this f of x which in this in this case a0 plus a1x so evaluate that function at xi and then that is the amount of error we square it up and then sum it up now the ideal situation is where there is no difference between the model proposed and the observed data that means this error is zero however the moment we try to fit a model because of various reasons there will be some error there will be some measurement error there will be some modeling error all of them will contribute to the difference between these two estimates now the ideal situation is where we have the minimum amount of error once we fit this model that means we need to minimize this capital s with respect to the parameters in this case the parameters are a0 and a1 because all other things xi and yi they are known so we need to optimize this s with respect to a0 and a1 so if we do that then we get a situation where we'll have the error minimized and we'll get the optimal model that we fit using the given data set so for that we differentiate s with respect to a0 and equate it to 0 and we get this expression and we continue that exercise so we differentiate with respect to next point that is a1 so we get the second equation now from the first equation 
if we simplify this expression we get this if we open up the bracket so this summation will sit over this a naught a naught is a constant so it will come out of summation so we will get uh, m times a naught plus a1 times summation of xi equal to summation of yi. Similarly, the second equation also you can see on your screen. In this case, it is a0 times summation of xi plus a1 times summation of xi square is equal to summation of xi yi. Now, the first equation, if we divide both sides by m, what we get this is summation of xi divided by m. So, that is the sample mean of x. Similarly, if we divide summation of yi with m, we get a sample mean of y. So, we get this expression a0 plus a1 x bar is equal to y bar. Now, this uh, x bar y bar is basically the centroid of the data set. So, what we do is we solve this uh, two equations. So, one is here uh, you can see in terms of the centroid of the data set and then another in terms of the summation. So, if we do that, we get first expression a0, you can see on your screen and then we can also find out a1 that is also there on your screen. Now, on the right hand side of this expression, everything is known because it is derived from the data set which is defined in terms of xi and yi. So, we can evaluate a0 and a1 and the moment we do that, we get the functional form fx equal to a0 plus a1x. So, the issue is uh, once we estimate this a0 and a1, we need to first ensure whether this is corresponding to minima. That we can easily check if we differentiate this expression of s twice and then we can easily verify that it is positive and that corresponds to the minima. So, we get the best estimate of a0 and a1 given the data set. So, that is how we fit a straight line when we have a set of data points. So, let us quickly solve a problem. So, we have some measurement. So, we have different temperature T and corresponding to different temperature we measure some distance and uh, we see that as the temperature increases there is an expansion so that is reflected in the measurement of the length so for this we wish to fit a curve l is equal to a0 plus a1t so in this case t is the independent variable and l that is the measured length in millimeter that is the dependent variable so we solve it our expression for a0 and a1 for minimum error is what you can see on your screen. So, we estimate that in this case x is equal to capital T and y is equal to small l. Then we find out t square and t times l and then finally we get the summations what you can see in this last row. So, from that uh, we first construct the equations and the two equations you can see on your screen. So, we have two unknowns and two equations that we can solve and we can estimate a0 and a1. Uh, that is what you can see. The moment we estimate a0, a1, we now have the model that we fit given the data set. So, the data points you can see marked as black dots and through the dots uh, we have a linear model marked by this blue line. Now, what you can see at every point, there is a finite amount of error that is reflected in this formulation. So, that modeling error, as we progress, we will see how we can improve uh, and we can reduce this modeling error just by changing the type of functions that we fit. But for the time being, at least if we have a data set, then we can fit a function just by optimizing the SSC that is sum of square of errors. So, if we continue that discussion, so we have a function which is uh, 
a polynomial of nth degree or having a function, for example, a logarithm or a trigonometric function or an exponential function or a combination, that also we can use to fit using a data set xi, yi. So, if we have a function y equal to a times x to the power c and that we wish to fit when we have a data set xi, yi. Now, for that what we do, we first take the logarithm. The moment we do that, this uh, equation reduces to log y equal to log a plus c times log x. And that we can represent in the linear format and the moment we do that, we can repeat the exercise that we have already done. So, in our case, log of small y is equal to the capital Y and a naught is log of a and a1 is equal to c. The moment we do that, we have a linear polynomial to fit. Now, the question is if we have a polynomial of nth degree, then also we can repeat the same exercise. The only thing is in this case, we will have uh, n plus 1 unknown. So, you can see the polynomial in this case a0 plus a1x plus a2x square and it goes up to a n x to the power n. So, we have uh, a polynomial function on the right hand side which can be represented in this format where j ranges from 0 to n. So, altogether we have n plus 1 coefficients a j to be solved just by minimizing the error. So, we can uh, easily do that. For that again the exercise is all the same. So, we have observations y i and the moment we select a model as you can see in this case, so we subtract from the observed data. So, that is the amount of error we have as we keep on changing this uh, independent variable x i. So, we square it up and then sum it up, we get the total amount of error that we have to minimize with respect to the unknowns. In this case, the unknowns are a j. So, we differentiate s with respect to a j and equate it to 0 and the moment we do that, we get a set of equations as you can see on your screen. Now, uh, we develop n plus 1 equations and we have exactly same number of unknowns. So, we can solve uh, and find out a j uniquely. So, let us uh, complete that exercise. So, we have uh, a polynomial uh, with uh, n plus 1 coefficients. So, we differentiate s with respect to a j as you have already seen. Now, um, normally uh, we can solve it for a finite number of uh, unknowns, but if we have simultaneous equations with large number of unknowns, then this type of solution may sometimes become unstable. But for the timing at least, the model is ready if you have n unknowns or n plus 1 unknowns, then we can develop that many simultaneous equation and then we can solve it. So, the moment we simplify this expression, you can see the equation on your screen and then in this expression, we have two parameters i ranging from 1 to m and j ranging from 0 to n. So, we have altogether n plus 1 equations just by changing this j from 0 to n and that if we do, we develop this set of equations. So, on the left hand side, this uh, square matrix, you can see this is completely known to us because it comes from the data set. What is unknown in this equation is a0, a1, a2 up to an. And on the right hand side again, these summations are known to us. So, we can solve this simultaneous equation and find out the solution for the unknowns. In this case, it is a. So, it is very straightforward. So, we take the inverse of this x matrix and then multiply that uh, with the right hand side and get the solution for this unknowns. This is a unique solution uh, because we have as many unknowns, that many simultaneous equations we have, so we can uniquely solve it. Of course, there are other numerical techniques. Normally, we do not invert this x matrix. So, we have numerical techniques to solve the simultaneous equations. But for the time being, uh, we are not worried of the numerical solutions. The moment we construct the model in this way, we can find out the optimal solution for the unknowns, which is A in this case. So, if we take a quadratic 
polynomial and then uh, if we try to fit uh, on this data set so you can see x and y so we have altogether five entries here and then the moment we have it we can find out uh, in this case uh, we need x square x cube x to the power 4 and then x y and x square y because of the uh, matrix we have here on the left hand side so the moment we do that we can now construct the simultaneous equations in this case we have altogether three unknowns a0 a1 and a2 so we have three simultaneous equations that you can see on your screen and then we can solve them to find out a0 a1 and a2 and then uh, the moment we have the coefficients ready we can develop the model so you can see the model proposed in this case y equal to the expression on the right hand side now this model will replace the actual set of observations which is given in this table so if you plot them uh, you can see now on your screen so the black dots are the observations and using these observations we fit a model now this model we can further use and the model that we fit comes from the observation or the data set we have here in this table so this model y equal to 6.1859 minus 2.2497 x plus 0 0.6111 x square this is what we call a meta model because this is not the exact physical model from where we get this uh, response based on x so let us see how we can extend this for other cases so as i have already explained that if you have a function of this format so in this case we have an exponential function to fit so you can easily take the logarithm on both side and then uh, reduce it to a linear form and then once we have that we can fit that expression so let us consider an example in this case uh, we have to determine the constant a and b in this equation y equal to a times e to the power bx and where we have this data set so we have x and y and uh, we wish to fit this uh, model in this case so what we do uh, again we take the logarithm on both sides and then we finally get the expression in this linear format so capital y in this case again a0 plus a1x so the moment we have this linear expression it is pretty straightforward so we can easily do it just by um, finding out x square and xy and then uh, we know how to construct this linear equations in this case we have two unknowns so we develop two equations just by differentiating capital s with respect to unknowns in this case a0 and a1 and then what we do we solve these equations and we get a0 and a1 so the moment we get a0 and a1 then we can find out uh, what are our a and b so that's uh, pretty straightforward so we can easily do that and find out the parameters of this model so if we plot that expression after taking the logarithm so we can see the black dots again that's the observation and then we fit a straight line uh, after taking the logarithm and obviously the moment we fit that we have some modeling error that is reflected at every observation point as we progress we'll see how we can uh, improve this uh, amount of error we have at every observation point but for the time being let us consider a different exponential function uh, as you can see on your screen in this case uh, fx is equal to a1 a to the power lambda 1x plus a2 e to the power lambda 2x plus up to a n a to the power lambda nx now this type of equation uh, we cannot take logarithm on both side uh, as we did in the previous case but uh, still we can fit this uh, model using a data set so we have uh, x1 x y1 x2 y2 up to x and yn 
And in this model, we have altogether two n unknowns. You can see a1, a2, a n, and then lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. So altogether two n unknowns. So we have to solve them. So for that, uh, first, uh, we can see that this expression of fx, it satisfies this differential equation. Now, this nth order differential equation um, is having this derivative of y with respect to x. So, what we can do, we can numerically find those um, derivatives using n data points and then if we substitute that, again we get uh, an expression, linear equation uh, of unknowns in this case a1, a2 up to n. So that if we do and one more issue is uh, this lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n, they are the roots of this algebraic equation and the moment we solve that, uh, we can then finally compute a1, a2, a n. So that is how we can fit this uh, exponential function to a given data set. So, we have this uh, equation for lambda, that is what we get um, from this expression and then if we say put n equal to 2, we have this expression and the corresponding differential equation you can also see on your screen. So, it is a second order differential equation that is satisfied by this model where we have summation of two different exponentials. So then what we do, we uh, use a reference point, in this case say x0 is the reference point and we can express this uh, derivatives of y with respect to x as you can see on your screen. So uh, with respect to these two points, say x0 that is the reference point up to x, so if we expand that, that is the expression and then um, if we repeat that exercise further and then represent this y prime that is the first derivative of y with respect to x again. So, we get this final expression. Now, here the last uh, expression on your screen it has double integral because uh, we have to integrate this last uh, expression on the left hand side of the differential equation twice and that is the reason we have this expression. So, we can use some mathematical uh, standard form as you can see on your screen. So, if we integrate this fx function multiple times, so we can represent that uh, multiple integral using this compact form. We will use this relation to further modify this last expression that we have derived. So, if we do that, uh, our expression reduces to this form and then uh, we have this equation and then we use two different points x1 and x2 such that x0 minus x1 is equal to x2 minus x0. So, if you do that, then we can construct this equation using two reference point x1 and x2 and that is what you can see on your screen. Now, if we sum them up, we get a compact form. And in this case, if you look at this expression, it has only unknowns a1 and a2. All other things are known to us and again it reduces to a linear equation of a1, a2. Now, using the data set, we can now fit this uh, expression and the moment we find out a1, a2, then we can trace back all other unknown quantities. In this case, it is capital A1, capital A2 and then lambda 1, lambda 2. So, that is how we can fit uh, sum of exponentials also using least square technique. Now, let us uh, see a problem. So, we wish to fit this uh, sum of exponentials here. So, what we do from this data set, we consider x1 to be 1 and x2 to be 1.4 and x0 to be 1.2. So, if we do that, we construct the expression and then from that we get the simultaneous equation and then again uh, we change this uh, reference points and then uh, we develop another set of equations. This integrals, what we have, we can invoke any numerical integral technique, for example, trapezoidal or Simpson's rule to find out these integrals. 
Nevertheless, we can carry out this uh, integration and then we can develop this simultaneous equation and the moment we have, we can solve this simultaneous equation and the moment we do that, as in this case, we get A1 and A2. Now, using A1 and A2, we can develop this quadratic equation and then we can find out what is the lambda 1 and lambda 2. And the moment we do that, after uh, all this, we can uh, find out the values of A1 and A2. And the model you can see on your screen, uh, we have this blue line, that is the summation of two exponentials and then this red dot. That is corresponding to the data set. Now, let us move further. Up to this point, whatever we have uh, discussed, in this case, we have uh, equal weightage for all the errors at different x size. Now, we can modify this model further and instead of giving equal weightage to all the weights, uh, all the errors, sorry, uh, we can define some weight at different i's and then based on that, we can recast the least square approximation where uh, we have weights as per our choice. So what we do, we find out the difference between the observed data yi and the data obtained from the model that is fxi. So this is the amount of error we have the moment we try to fit a model f of x. So this ei times this capital wi, capital wi is the weight. So we square the error and then multiply that by wi and then sum it up. So we get the square of the errors summed up from i equal to 1 to m and then that is the weighted sum because we introduced this capital wi. Now in our previous model, this capital wi is 1 for all points that is represented by this xi. So we have the weighted sum. Obviously, these weights are positive numbers and we need to define those weights. I will explain how we are going to define those weights. It is uh, up to the user. So we can define that weights and we will see the moment we define the weights, what are the benefits. So let us now start with the same model y equal to a0 plus a1x. So we have a linear model and then we have a data set uh, x1, x2 up to xm and ym. So obviously in place of f of xi, we put this expression. So we have yi minus this model which is a linear model. So we have a0 plus a1x. Now then we square it up, multiply that by the capital wi and then sum it over for all i's ranging from 1 to m. So we have uh, complete data sets. That's the observation. So we sum it up and we get total value of capital X, which is a function of a0 and a1. Then what we do? We uh, differentiate this function again with respect to a0. The moment we differentiate that, we get the first expression. The only thing is, the moment we have capital W1 or Wi equal to 1, uh, we get back the least square equation that we have already derived. Similarly, we differentiate S with respect to A1 and then we get another equation. Now in this equation, if you can see, the only unknowns are A0 and A1 and uh, that we can easily solve from this equation the moment we expand this and simplify. That will give us the simultaneous equations that you can see on your screen. The only modification in this case is the introduction of this weights that is changing with i. Now, once we solve this two equations, we get a0 and a1. And then the moment we have a0 and a1, then we can again uh, construct this model y in terms of a0 and a1. So, let us see an example. So, we have our set of data and then so we have x versus y 
but at x equal to 5 we need to fit a model which is more accurate at this particular point. So that's the reason we introduce weight and we define 1 for all other points but at 5 we define the weight to be 10. So that's how we define the weights and the moment we try to fit a model more closely at 5 so we increase the weight at that point and then repeat the exercise. So we need to find out all these parameters w times x then w times x square then w times y and then finally w times xy. And then we construct the equations as you can see on your screen in this case we have these two equations. And if we solve this we get the values of a0 and a1. And the moment we do that we can develop the model that we propose. In this case our model is y equal to minus 1.349345 plus 2.73799x. So now we can plot this function and we can repeat the exercise also using least square approach. That means for that we need to define all these weights to be 1. So that you can see on your screen. So we have these black dots that represents the observations. Through that we first fit this least square curve represented by the blue line. And at every point you can see there is a finite amount of error. So obviously at x equal to 5 we have a large amount of error estimated from ordinary least square. So this OLS that is the blue line gives a finite amount of error at this point. But the moment we go for weighted least square and we define a higher weights corresponding to x equal to 5, you can see this red line corresponding to WLS that means weighted least square. It almost touches this black dot at x equal to 5. So the amount of error at this point from the least square and the weighted least square you can compare and obviously the result shows that weighted least square gives us a better result. That also we can compare and we can easily see from the plot. Now the question is if we increase this weight does it improve? So let us see if we now increase the weight from 10 to 100 obviously and then repeat the same exercise again we can construct two equations in terms of a0 and a1 and the moment we solve that we can again uh, construct the model but with a higher weight corresponding to x equal to 5 and that you can see in the plot and in this case again this red line it actually passes through the black dot at x equal to 5. So the estimation of y from this model where we have a higher weight at x equal to 5 the result is more accurate with uh, the observations we have that is represented by this black dot. So this result clearly shows that if we define the weights depending upon the need we have, we can actually improve the least square estimate just by introducing this error. And in fact, there is uh, no fixed rule that we have to have higher weights only in one point. We can also change the weights at different points and thereby also we can improve the performance of the ordinary least square. Now, if we extend that for nonlinear functions, for them also we can go for weighted least square approximation. So we have say a function here. So altogether we have n plus 1 unknowns again. And then uh, for that also we can define the weighted least square. And then in this case we need to differentiate s with respect to ai. So we have altogether n plus uh, 1, uh, it should be 0 here. So it starts from a0, goes up to a n. So altogether n plus 1 uh, unknown here. So we can develop this uh, simultaneous equation and then we can solve them and find out the unique solution for this constant a0, a1, a2 up to a n. 
Now, sometimes we have continuous functions. Not always we have discrete data points to uh, deal with. For continuous function also, we can apply least square technique. So in this case, if we have a continuous function defined by uh, domain say A to B, then in, instead of discrete points, we have a continuous uh, function. And for that also, we can fit a polynomial as you can see on your screen. So we have this polynomial again with n plus 1 unknown. And then uh, instead of summation, in this case, because we have a continuous function, so the total error, square of error is in this case, uh, is uh, integral from A to B, Wx, that is the weight function, defined over this domain and then yx that is the continuous function minus the model that we fit. So we square it up and then integrate this function over the complete domain we get the total error and on the right hand side the only unknowns are a0, a1 up to an so this capital S is a function of all these unknowns and then we can still uh, differentiate that with respect to ai and then we can develop the equation. So we develop uh, n plus 1 simultaneous equation as you can see on your screen and the moment we do that we can uh, solve this problem and find out the unknowns in this model. So in this case a1 sorry a0, a1, a2 up to an that we can solve from this relation and then we can uniquely define this model that will replace the continuous function within this domain. So Again, uh, we solve this uh, by matrix inversion, but uh, if we have a large number of uh, unknowns, that means we have a um, higher order models to fit. Obviously, in, in place of this matrix inversion, we can adopt any other numerical technique. So, let us consider a problem. So, in this case, we have a function yx equal to sin x and that ranges from 0 to pi by 2 and we have a weight function for the time being wx equal to 1. So what we do, we try to fit this quadratic uh, function and uh, if we solve this um, previous expression, yeah, here you can see. So if you put the expression of wx and then uh, y here, so we can solve this and find out this um, set of simultaneous equations. So we have altogether three unknowns here, a0, a1 and a2. So we can see the expression for this and the moment we solve that, we get uh, these equations and we can find out the inverse of that and then find out what is the value of a0 and similarly we can repeat that exercise for a1 a and a2. So once we solve this, we get the expression for the model that we are going to fit. So if we compare the value, say at uh, pi by 4, we have a value of uh, 0 0.707106781. And from the model also, we can estimate and compare it with the original value and that you can see on your screen. So you have these black dots are the um, estimated values from this continuous function and the blue line actually the model that we fit in this case and the error uh, at this pi by 4 is very small as you can see on your screen. So that's how we can use continuous function to actually fit a least square curve and then uh, instead of using this continuous function now we can use this uh, new expression for y. And then using that expression, whatever mathematical operations we need to carry out, that we can easily adapt. That is precisely what we will do in case of um, reliability analysis for a limit state which is having an implicit expression. So what we will do, at some discrete locations, we will solve some model that may be a finite element model and from that we will define the limit state function and based on those observations, 
just like you have these black dots in this case, we will fit a model which we will call a meta model because that is not an exact model. And then on that uh, meta model uh, that we can easily differentiate with respect to the constituent um, independent variables. And then we can adopt all our reliability models, for example, first order reliability analysis or second order reliability analysis. And that is how we can solve the problem for implicit performance function that we will see in the next class as we progress further. So, before we close today's lecture, let us first uh, define two important uh, parameters that we often use when we fit a model. One is R square, another is adjusted R square. For that, uh, you first consider this schematic diagram. So, we have this green dots. Those are observations. Now, based on that observed values, we first fit a model. So, this blue line on your screen, that is the model we fit. And uh, if you have, say, y, that is the dependent variable on x, which is the independent variable, then we have a mean estimation based on this data point. So, you can take the average of y and that is represented by this red line. Now, from this mean estimate, which we can directly get from the data, we can define the error at a particular point. So, if we consider this observation at this point, we have the model value is here. Out of that, this total error, we can uh, divide it into two groups. One is the one that we can explain. So, this variation between the mean response and the observed data that we get that is the explained variation and then uh, from this observed to the model we have another amount of error which we call it unexplained variation. Now obviously uh, if we write down the expression so the error which we can explain is yi hat minus yi so at this point this is the observation which is represented by this hat minus y bar that is the mean. Similarly the residual uh, we can also define so yi that comes from the model minus yi hat that is the observation so that is the residual now obviously the total error in this case is the summation of these two and that will uh, give the difference between yi and the y bar so which is the difference between the model we have and the mean estimate similarly we can also define sum of uh, square of errors. So, SS uh, from explained variations, yeah, we just square it up and then sum it up. That is um, SS explained. Similarly, the residual we can also define from this expression on the left hand side. And then the total SS is basically the square of this quantity and when we sum it up for all i. Now, uh, the main aim uh, behind this uh, defining this R square value is to check how best this uh, blue line uh, can represent the observed data point. Uh, so, we try to find out the expression of R square that, that is the ratio of SS explained divided by SS total and uh, from this last expression of total um, SS we can uh, further modify it and we get this expression of R square which is 1 minus uh, the residual SS divided by the total SS. Obviously, in this model, the moment we have uh, our SS residual uh, goes down, then obviously uh, R square value goes up and that means uh, this residual part it goes down. So, we have uh, this blue line coming closer to this green dot and that is the reason we have a, a increased R square value indicating that the model we fit uh, represents the data more accurately. Now, not always that is the true uh, case and that is the reason we have a better estimate adjusted R square value. So, the expression for adjusted R square you can also see which is 1 minus uh, 
1 minus r square times n minus 1 divided by n minus p minus 1. So, in this case, n is the number of points in the data set and k, sorry, this should be p, small p. So, that is the independent variables in our model. So, um, both these indicators, they actually measure the goodness of fit, but out of that adjusted R square is more appropriate uh, because of some inherent reasons uh, that we are not going to discuss because our uh, main focus is not on the uh, numerical estimations of these models and their error analysis. But uh, this is for your information because very often we use this R square and adjusted R square values. So we should know how to interpret them because uh, both of them uh, tells, uh, tell us uh, how best our model actually replicate the observed data. Because the moment we have less error and more accurate model, obviously that will be reflected in our reliability estimate. That's what we are going to do next. So for all those problems we have already solved, I will uh, leave an exercise for you. You please estimate the R-square and adjusted R-square values and then compare their values uh, for each and every case and see how best they um, actually um, convey us uh, the accuracy of our model that we fit uh, based on a given data set. So with that, let us close our uh, discussion today and then as we move further, in the next class we will see how this uh, uh, least square can be further improved using uh, other uh, models for exp functions that we are going to discuss next. And then finally, the third lecture in this uh, week, we'll see how we can use this model for reliability analysis. With that, let us close our discussion on uh, least square curve fitting. Thank you very much.